Welcome to today's episode, everyone. I'm Dr. Ava Simmons, an environmental scientist, and I'm joined by my esteemed colleague, Professor Leo Martinez, an expert in economics and sustainable development. Today, we'll be discussing an important yet often overlooked topic, the long-term effects of war on the climate. Leo, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Ava. It's great to be here. This is certainly a subject that deserves more attention, and I'm looking forward to our discussion. Absolutely, Leo. To start, can you give our listeners a brief overview of the connection between war and climate change? Of course. War can have a significant impact on the environment and climate in various ways. Some of these effects include deforestation, soil degradation, and air and water pollution caused by military activities, as well as the displacement of populations and the destruction of infrastructure, which can lead to further environmental degradation. That's a great overview, Leo. It's also worth mentioning that the resources consumed during wars, such as fossil fuels, contribute to greenhouse gas emissions, which drive climate change. This is especially concerning since military activities often escape the usual regulations and monitoring that would help mitigate their environmental impact. Certainly, Ava. The military-industrial complex is one of the largest consumers of energy globally, and much of this energy comes from fossil fuels. Military vehicles such as tanks, aircraft, and naval vessels consume enormous amounts of fuel, and the production of arms and munitions also requires significant energy inputs. Furthermore, military bases and installations often have high energy demands, which contribute to emissions. Thanks for that explanation. Now, you mentioned earlier that nuclear weapons can have long-lasting environmental and climatic consequences. Can you elaborate on this point? The production and testing of nuclear weapons have led to the release of radioactive materials into the environment, which can cause both immediate and long-term health and environmental issues. Additionally, nuclear explosions can release large amounts of dust and aerosols into the atmosphere, which can impact weather patterns and contribute to global cooling, at least in the short term. Furthermore, the production of nuclear weapons involves the use of ozone-depleting substances, which can have long-lasting effects on the ozone layer and climate. That's certainly concerning. Now let's discuss the indirect effects of war on climate change. For example, how does war affect food scarcity, and how does this in turn impact the environment and climate? Great question, Ava. Wars can lead to food scarcity due to several factors, such as disrupted agricultural production, damaged infrastructure, and the displacement of populations. In response to food scarcity, countries may intensify agricultural production, leading to practices such as overgrazing, overfertilization, and the expansion of agriculture into previously uncultivated land. This can result in deforestation, soil degradation, and increased greenhouse gas emissions. That's an important point, Leo. How do wars affect efforts to mitigate and adapt to climate change? Can you provide some examples? Certainly. Wars can hinder climate change mitigation and adaptation efforts in several ways. First, resources that could be allocated to addressing climate change are often diverted to military efforts during times of conflict. This can lead to underinvestment in renewable energy, energy efficiency, and other sustainable development initiatives. Second, wars can disrupt international cooperation and collaboration on climate change. In the absence of a stable, peaceful environment, it becomes much more challenging to work together on shared goals, such as reducing greenhouse gas emissions and preparing for the impacts of climate change. Third, wars can result in the displacement of populations, which constrain the resources and infrastructure of host communities, making it even more difficult to implement climate change adaptation measures. Thank you for explaining that, Leo. It's clear that the relationship between war and climate change is complex and multifaceted. What steps can we take to address these challenges and promote peace and cooperation? Addressing the long-term effects of war on climate change requires a comprehensive approach that includes both conflict prevention and environmental protection. This includes investing in diplomatic efforts and dialogue to prevent conflicts from escalating and encouraging disarmament, particularly of nuclear weapons, which pose significant environmental risks. Additionally, we should work to strengthen international environmental agreements and promote sustainable development, including investing in renewable energy and climate change adaptation measures. Lastly, it's important to raise public awareness about the environmental and climatic consequences of war. 
as greater understanding can contribute to a global culture of peace and sustainability. Those are excellent suggestions, Leo. As we conclude today's discussion, let's remember that the impacts of war on the environment and climate are far-reaching, and it's essential to consider these consequences when discussing global security and sustainability. Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you'll tune in again for our next episode. Stay informed, stay curious, and take care.